So I built this kitchen pantry and we didn't have a pantry because when we designed the kitchen cabinets for the house, we did, we ran out of time to uh, design the, the pantry. We forgot. <laughs> so we had already ordered the cabinets and we realized, oh, we don't have a pantry. And so I was like, okay, I'll build it. So I didn't get a lot of footage of building the uh, frame itself. You can see it there in the back right of the picture. Um, it's built out of three quarter inch plywood and it's a faceless frame. But then I made the back out of half inch plywood and I made all the drawers out of half inch plywood. So I used a little different, a little different approach than I would normally do with drawers. Uh, I haven't built drawers out of half inch plywood before, but I wanted them to be light and I wanted them to be cheap. And so uh, I cut these bottoms and fronts out of the half inch plywood. I clamped them together with glue and then I pilot hold screws and then I use drywall screws to assemble them. And I countersunk those screws so that when I would put the face on, uh, they would not be sitting too proud of the drawer frame itself. Uh, I had a couple challenges with this. You can see there, it's in the back left of the picture now. That's the pantry. And I had it arranged such that I was going to put these drawers in the upper right hand corner and the intent was to only have this sitting about 12 inches off the floor just to clear a base trim board, you know, a baseboard along the bottom of the wall. But there's an outlet that's about 16 inches high on the wall and I thought, well, I'm going to have to cut a hole in the back of the cabinet to, you know, accommodate this outlet. But then you would have exposed plywood edge there. And I was thinking about hanging it on the wall with a French cleat, which is going to space it off the wall by at least three quarters of an inch, which I would then have to trim out. But then I would have the outlet too far recessed and I'd have to bring the outlet out. So that was way too complicated. So finally I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to build a stand. So the drawers are done. I uh, got the right spacing. I used half inch plywood spacers to do that. And so then I, I had bought a uh, four quarter hickory rough sawn piece of wood from Woodcraft and I, trim, I used that to trim out the front of the faces of this frame so that it looks like it's solid hickory but it's not and then this is what was left over I had these two pieces of hickory that I could use for legs and they had a defect in them they they were likely cut out from somewhere in the center of the log and so there might have been a hole in that log and so they had a divot and sort of a, a, a trough in them from, from that defect. And so I was debating about how to deal with that and finally I was just like, I'm going to sand it out and make it look like a live edge. I want this to look kind of rough and handmade. And so that worked out pretty well. And then I notched out these things for some stringers to space it apart and uh, played around with the... Uh, the way that I notched that out using a jigsaw and my air grinder and, and different methods. I was just testing different methods to see what would work best and the, the jigsaw worked out pretty well and I came back in after with a chisel and cleaned it up. But then I squared them up with these one, two, three blocks and uh, I used oak as these stringers and oak's gonna get hidden. I just used oak because it was scrap and it's strong and um, then I put a, a piece of hickory on the front here to cover up the oak so you never see it. And the oak is glued and screwed into those channels that I just cut out. So I did something different here with the way that I assembled the rest of this stand. And I used wood dowels with glue. And the way I did this was I used a Forstner bit that was at the right diameter for the wood dowels. And I drilled it out and then blew it out with air. And then I dumped a bunch of glue into that hole and I slammed a, a pin in there from the dowel and cleaned it up and I let it dry. And part of the reason why I did this was I wanted it to look kind of handmade. I wanted it to look sort of farmhouse, sort of reclaimed vintage, kind of all those things together. And so I didn't, I, I didn't uh, measure anything. I just eyeballed where to put the dowels and I just went for it. And I wanted this to look very handmade. You're not going to see these screws. You're not going to see the top of the oak. Uh, it's just going to get mounted right on top. And then I strengthened these stringers. You know, it's strengthened there with the hickory, and then there's a, a larger piece of white oak underneath that oak stringer in the back that I add here in a minute. And then I put triangular braces on either end uh, to help square it up. Here's my daughter helping me out. 
she really wanted some pieces of those dowels because she loves to play with wood glue and dowels <laughs> and she wanted some of those too. So then I cut what's left of the dowels off the flush trim saw and uh, then I sanded those down after that with the orbital sander and you can see those right angle braces that I put in. I also secured those and squared those up with dowels. And I thought that the dowels would add a nice touch, a sort of handmade touch. You really can't see them uh, now that it's done, but you know, if you look close, you can. And I figure this pantry will probably be here for a long time. And if we ever sell this house, you know, somebody will come in and be like, oh, wow, cool. Look at this handmade pantry. Who knows? Or they'll say, this is terrible. I hate it. And they'll tear it out. So uh, there's the stand. And then finally I got uh, to staining the cabinet itself and I used General Finishes Nutmeg Gel Stain and did the same thing for the drawer fronts and for the stand itself and got the drawer slides mounted and all spaced out appropriately and then it was moving day. So there's the drawers. There you've got hickory fronts with that same nutmeg stain and I got uh, some drawer poles that matched the drawer poles in our kitchen. And there's the stand in place. You can see I didn't have to modify the baseboard at all. And I didn't have to modify the outlet at all. And then my father-in-law helped me pick this thing up and plop it onto the stand. And one secret feature in this was that drawer where my left hand is right there has an outlet. And that outlet cord goes around the back of it. And I routed a channel back there to tuck it in there so we can mount it flush up against the wall but it powers uh, an AC outlet and a couple USB outlets. And that means that we can put our devices in that drawer and hide them and get them off the counter, which is one thing my wife really wanted. Underneath it where this, the space underneath it, where the stand has uh, given us some space is for bulky stuff like paper towels and bottled water and anything else that we might get from Costco. I drilled it into the studs with four screws. So there's four, I think two and a half inch long screws so it's, it's very secure to the wall and then I secured it to the stand so the stand supports a lot of the weight and the screws on the wall support a lot of the weight and then I started putting the drawers in and that's the device drawer there on the right you can see I'm putting the USB cords in there and testing out to see if they work and they did and then we put all these in these drawers are junk drawers I, I like having junk drawers I don't like having one junk drawer in the kitchen. It really irritates me when everything's cluttered in there and you can't find what you want. Each drawer is kind of like its own category of stuff. And then we started putting stuff in the pantry and, and making it do what it's supposed to do. There's the iRobot plugged in underneath the charging. And you can see how the charging drawer works. There's my phone. It's charging. Yay. Thanks, charging drawer. So that's the build hope you liked it if you like these videos subscribe hit hit the like button i'm so excited because now i have my garage back and i can work on something else see you next time